My name is Cole Woolley, and this is the research facilities that we have here at Young Living. As you can see here, we've got a GCMS here, and we've got a long column GC behind us. And let me tell you, I've been working for 30 years in the separation science industry. I started out with my PhD working with Milton Lee, who's a renowned separation scientist at Brigham Young University. And I was with him when we first started working on this invention from Hewlett Packard called the Open Tubular Fusilica Column. Now this was first designed by Hewlett Packard and they were given a patent. And they were the ones that designed these instruments, now called the Agilent instruments. And this column, the Open Tubular GC Column, goes inside of the instrument. This is the heart of the instrument. This is where the separation takes place. And that's why we use a 60 meter or 50 meter column because it gives the best resolution. Now here at, uh, at Young Living, we get uh, essential oils from all over the world. And when they come in, they get tested by us in very minute detail. We, we will sometimes measure as many as 150 or 200 different phytochemicals that are found in the essential oil. Let me introduce you to Brett Smith, who's our chief operator of the GCMS. And Brett, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do every day? Well, what I do every day is I basically test every essential oil that ever comes in here. And as Cole mentioned earlier, is these oils come from across the world, from Taiwan, from the Middle East, from Africa, to all over the United States, Canada. Pretty much everywhere in the world where, grows, where plants grow, we get oils and I test them. Um, the interesting part about it is, is in the analysis of these essential oils, as Cole said, we do go into very minute detail, identifying the smallest peaks possible, going to a hundred plus different phytochemicals in each oil. Now, the interesting part about this is during those seasons of harvest, Gary tends to th throw me tons and tons of oils. He sends me samples from every 15 minutes off of the distillation to analyze these components, to really to find out at what times these chemicals come out so that we can perfect our process to really find how we can get the most therapeutic um, essential oil out there to the people. Um, Tell us about how difficult it is to analyze the components. Can just anybody do this? Not necessarily. It's, it is a very complex process. Now, as we said, it wasn't, these essential oils don't just have one or two components in it. They have hundreds of different components. And now the major peaks are usually fairly easy to identify, but when you get into the small, um, what we like to call grass of the situation, uh, of the essential oil, it's a lot more difficult. We have a lot more um, components and you get a lot of what we call coelutions in the essential oil, which makes it a lot more difficult. And once again, this is a lot harder than a lot of people think. It's not just identifying a peak because every peak that we get, we get what we call mass spectral data. And in this mass spectral data is basically all this information of how these chemicals break up into small little fragments and get measured out. And we have to take this data, compare it to databases, to other things, and to be able to identify it. Now, the problem is, is sometimes these compounds aren't actually identified in our library. So what we have to do is we have to work back and kind of reconstruct these compounds through its fragments to kind of figure out the chemistry of the compound or this molecule so that we can be able to properly identify the, um, all these components to make sure that what we're getting is not synthetic, to make sure that they are all natural and that what we are giving to the customer are pure, pure essential oils. So when there's a lot of unknown compounds in the essential oils that come from all over the world, we rely upon the mass spec and also retention indices that are in, in, uh, unique for each compound that comes out. And we use Dr. Casabianca's Retention Index Library. It's a unique library. We also use NIS, NIST Library to give us data so that we can positively confirm each compound, each phytochemical that's in there using the mass spec and the retention index. Now we have a lot of mass spectra that we can search. Brett, why don't you tell them about that? Well we have libraries from all over. We have libraries from NIST, from Wiley, but we also have many libraries that we have put together inside in-house here. Now some of these libraries Gary started putting together over 18 years ago with samples that we started testing. 
So with these libraries, we're able to identify more than just phytochemicals, but we're also able to identify synthetics and also adulterants. Um, some of these things, such as plasticizers like diethyl phthalate, we are able to identify. And if we do identify any of these compounds, we automatically reject the essential oil. Um, we've also been able to identify some other preservatives and some other oils, such as BHT. And once again, once we identify these, we automatically reject the oil. Um, we've also been able to identify some th synthetics to help us identify if this oil is 100% natural or not. Now, this has been done through numerous different ways. One way is such is with um, chiral chemistry and being able to run chiral analysis on our essential oils as well. Yeah, and so what we do is we take a different column, a chiral column, we put it in the GCMS, we analyze the sample, and it separates in antimers. And we were able to prove that frankincense from Oman is very unique from the frankincense from Africa, right? Yes, that's right. Very, true. very unique. And we were the first ones. We published the article on this in 2012. It's great strides in, in research. So that's an overview of the extensive work that we do in research. Uh, it takes a long time to look at each component of the essential oils. This is a very laborious process. And as, as we move from research, we go into the phase where essential oils that are distilled and brought into Young Living are now individually tested in 10 different instrumentation in our quality control lab. So I'd like to introduce the quality control supervisor of the analytical lab, Gabriela Garcia.